Well, good morning. I'm out here uh, at the Santa Rosa National Monument, which is uh, uh, somewhere between Palm Springs and Idlewild, if you think of it that way. Uh, it's near the Sawmill Trail and the Cactus uh, Spring Trail that uh, I was on a few weeks ago. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go take a drive up Santa, Mountain, uh, Santa Rosa Mountain Road, and we're going to be on 7S02, and we're going to head all the way up to the top of Santa Rosa Mountain and Toro Peak. We can't go all the way to Toro Peak because that's on Indian Reservation land, and they don't take too kindly to people trespassing. But uh, you can shoot up uh, part of the way uh, up to uh, Santa Rosa Mountain, which is very close. And we're right here off the uh, off the highway, off uh, uh, Highway 74, which is the road that leads from Idlewild all the way toward Palm Springs. So anyway, this is going to be a good adventure today. It's going to be just a solo camping trip for me by myself. And we're going to be heading up this road right here behind us. Well, this is our first shot of our road that's going to be going up uh, Santa Rosa Mountain and eventually toward Toro Peak. So I'll be heading up that way. Uh, it's a uh, four-wheel drive trail or a truck trail. So I'll be heading up uh, on a road that looks like that, heading up to the left. Well, that's our first real glimpse of the trees and where we're eventually heading. There's a, uh, it looks like a creek down there of some kind, and a, a little while back I saw water, glistening of water flowing downstream. So there is some water up here, just not a lot. I am four miles in the Santa Rosa Mountain Trail right now. Well, I came to a wide corner on the uh, truck trail here. You can see the truck trail down below me as it works its way up toward the top of Santa Rosa Mountain. Uh, San Jacinto was the tall one in the background right there. And our, our road is come to the apex and a turn right here as we're continuing up the mountain. Palm Desert is out that way on the other side. Can't really see it from here. This is more of a view looking west. Well, we must be getting fairly close. I can see uh, the uh, communication towers through the trees. I'm just ahead of me there. So. This is a dusty road, that's for sure. You should see the dust that's collected on my phone and hopefully be able to see something. When we get back to the car, when we get back to the house, you'll be able to see something. But about uh, four motorcycles just passed me in Duros, a couple more cars. Uh, everybody's been really nice and pleasant. I'm glad they're heading down the hill, not up the hill with me. I'm just hoping I can find a spot. There's only, I think, 14 Yellow Bulls campsites up here. And uh, hopefully one's got my name on it. Well, this must be uh, Yellow Post campsite number one. It's right here off the road. I don't think I'd want to be here, but uh, it is available. Well, hello and welcome back to Anthony's Audio Journal. This episode is coming to you from a Yellow Post campsite called Golf Flats, G-O-F-F -F Flats. It's near Idlewild, California. And uh, it's taken me a while to get here, a little longer than I thought. I, uh, I decided to take a ride up Santa Rosa Mountain. And uh, the road was a little rougher than I thought it would be. And uh, uh, all the campsites were full. And uh, the ones that were available were pretty bad. 
they weren't level they were small they were literally right on the dirt road and i decided to give this shot a try over here at golf flats i've been here before with the family for a picnic and i decided that this would be a great spot to set up my hammock and my uh, big winter tarp and also i set up my polish lavu over here as well as my locust gear calf for a shelter so i have three shelters set up tonight so maybe i'll sleep i don't know three hours each one who knows but uh it's a little windy here it's about uh, almost six thousand feet in the uh san bernardino national forest you don't really think of Idlewild as san bernardino but i guess it's all encompassed in this one spot so they manage the uh, Idlewild area and this is included in that um i can't have a fire tonight i also have a campfire permit which I went online and, and, and received, so I have that with me. Uh, they have a campfire uh, ring here, as well as two picnic tables, uh, and a nice wide open flat camping spot. So it's a perfect spot to hang my hammock. It's a little close. Uh, I kinda had to stretch it a little bit just to get it to fit, but um, it's hung up there pretty nice. So maybe it's a, a good place to take a nap, who knows. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, enjoy my camp here hang out, have a couple of cocktails, I guess, and uh, wait for nightfall. Um, I'm gonna be able to do the campfire, so I also brought my Coleman stove just in case, but uh, I've got uh, some really good chicken and some potatoes I'm gonna make for dinner tonight, and then tomorrow I'm gonna have bacon and eggs. That's gonna be great. So anyway, um, that's gonna be coming up later on tonight when it starts to get a little dark. I've also got a couple of lanterns I'm gonna be uh, lighting later, so I'll have a little bit more of an ambiance. But in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy the afternoon. It's about 75 degrees, maybe a little less, 72. It's really nice here. There's a little bit of flies, a little bit of mosquitoes. So I used some DEET that I covered up with and uh, hopefully that'll take care of it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna just hang out here in uh, Gulf Flats and enjoy the peace and solitude. Anyway, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Well, I've got to get some firewood ready for tonight. I brought my uh, my old bow saw. The buck saw, I also brought uh, my uh, vintage Hultaforce axe. Um, made in Sweden, this is an awesome axe. Little hand hatchet. This ought to make pretty quick work of this little uh, kindling here. And for the thicker stuff, I brought the, uh, the buck saw. So you have to be careful to keep something between you and uh, the cutting surface. That's why I have my leg on the other side of this log. And for the bigger stuff, I think I'm going to use the uh, use the buck saw. There's a couple of different blades that come with this. This one is for uh, dry wood. They also make one that's a uh, little finer teeth, and it's for uh, for greener wood. But this one works good for this old dry, uh, old dry pine. This stuff ought to burn pretty good tonight. Here's a big piece here. See if I can get through this one. No problem. Well, hello and uh, welcome to my campsite here at Golf Flats. Um, I have three different shelters set up today, three. I've got my uh, Locust Gear Cafra set up right here. 
uh, and I know you're not supposed to have the tarp extending past the walls of the tent, but there's a zero chance of rain, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, I didn't feel like moving it. Well, anyway, I've got it set up right now. This is a, a nine by nine shelter. I've used this on numerous backpack trips. Uh, I haven't cut a stove jack in it yet. That's coming, but uh, anyway, I just threw a wool blanket down there just for some added cushion. Uh, but I've also got a couple of other things here set up. Um, I've got my Polish Lavoo set up right here. Eventually, I might uh, I might tuck in there and maybe take a little siesta. Who knows? Um, this is actually two Polish military ponchos that are buttoned together, and they have an armhole on either side. And I want to put my stove in here and put a uh, put the stove pipe through there. So I might try that later. Um, but I also have my uh, my Hennessy hammock, my Expedition ASIM hammock that I set up. Um, we've got that over here, and it was so nice of them to provide me with some structural support so I can have a nice front porch. So if you see it from this angle over here, I've got a good uh, probably four foot awning over here. So uh, not that it's going to rain because it's not, there's a zero percent chance of rain. I just did it for shade, but uh, I can sit in there, take a nap in the hammock and uh, enjoy my view out the front porch while I'm uh, waiting for nightfall. Um, I don't know why all of these uh, yucca stalks are here, but uh, I'm gonna take advantage of them. Um, maybe I'll burn one or two, who knows. But anyway, this is my campsite here at Golf Flats. It's a great spot if you're gonna just family car camp. Uh, it's basically set up for only one real campsite. There is an area over here where I guess technically you could have another camp. It's actually big enough, you could have 10 people here, I guess, if you wanted to. But uh, for me, I'm hogging the whole place. There's nobody here but me, and I'm gonna enjoy it tonight. It's gonna be nice and quiet. Uh, Idlewild and San Jacinto is off that direction right there. The wind is blowing down off the top of the mountain, and uh, we'll see how cold it gets tonight. It's uh, middle of June, so it's not gonna be too cold. It's probably gonna be 50 or so, so should be in for a warm night. Uh, it does have a fire ring, so I'm going to do a little fire later. It's what they call a yellow post site. There's a yellow post right there. So fires are allowed. I do have a permit. And uh, I'm going to cook uh, chicken breast over the uh, open fire. That would be really good tonight. Brought some uh, things to play with, a whole bunch of knives. I bought uh, a bunch of camera gear so I can shoot some video. Um, bought a couple of different types of uh, kettles and pots so I can boil water. Um, so we'll see. I should have uh, plenty of things to do tonight. I just saw the largest damn jackrabbit I've ever seen in my life. It ran right in front of me across the road. It was so big I thought it was a damn deer. Literally. When he was running with his ears, they were like almost waist high. I can't believe... Oh, there he goes. He's way up in the hill. He's running up the hill. The thing is, the thing is at least mid-thigh height with his ears. It was huge. Well, I'm just hanging out here at... Uh... The Golf Yellow Post campsite. Got my uh, my old uh, Hennessy Expedition ASIM hammock hung. Forgot how comfortable it was. So I'm just kind of hanging out here. It's only uh, about 4.30 here in a little bit. I'll uh, get out the dinner fixings. I'll have a chicken breast. I'm going to put some chicken fixings on it and uh, cook it over the fire on a spit. That ought to be pretty good. Well, I'm... Uh, I cut up a potato and I'm frying it on this uh, this old Griswold skillet. Some of them are getting a little burnt, but you know, nice and crispy is how I like it. Then over here, I've got uh, some bacon wrapped jalapenos that are going to be my appetizer. And I've got uh, my chicken gonna be cooking right there on the campfire I can't wait for those uh, cream cheese jalapenos those are gonna be good it's finally starting to cool down a little bit I can actually feel a little bit of the nip in the air but got the fire going here I've got my uh, chicken breast cooking on a squirrel cooker 
I've also got my bacon wrapped jalapenos sitting on top of the grid. I can't wait for those. I'm just dying to try those. The squirrel cooker looks like it's going to work pretty good. Nothing better than uh, chicken over an open fire. Well, I'm sitting here beside the fire over at uh, Golf Yellow Post campsite. I've got my bacon wrapped jalapenos on top and I've got my uh, chicken breast cooking on a squirrel cooker. So we'll see how this works. Um, it's nice that there's a Yellow Post campsite down here because they have a fire ring that they provide you and you're allowed to have fires in uh, approved campsites. And as long as you have a wilderness fire permit, which you can get online or you can get from the ranger station, um, takes about five minutes and you have to watch a short little video showing that you know how to put out a fire, you know how to maintain your fire. Um, just for safety, they've had some pretty horrendous wildfires up in this area. So as long as you keep your fire small and you are prepared to put it out and you know how to put it out basically and you don't leave it smoldering when you leave uh, everybody should be fine there's a nice good clearing around it there's a yellow post right there so obviously this is an area where you're allowed to have a fire and uh, hopefully the smoke from this fire will keep away the mosquitoes i've noticed uh several of them uh landing on my face i had to put some deet on earlier but the one thing that i did before i left i remember on the last adventure when i went to uh, the sawmill trail, um, I brought two left feet. And this time, I brought my sandals, and I brought the matching pair, but what I didn't do was I didn't bring shoes. I didn't bring boots. I was planning on wearing boots tonight since I'm just going to be car camping, and, uh, and I forgot them. So it doesn't matter. I've got the Luna sandals. I'm good. And it's not cold right now. The only reason I'm wearing this... Uh, old vintage Woolridge shirt is just to keep the mosquitoes off me and to keep a little bit of the nip off. Um, but right now it actually feels pretty nice around camp. There's hardly any wind at all. And uh, I'm enjoying this nice warm heat by the fire and the smell of a camp. There's nothing wrong with, you know, cooking over a barbecue or cooking over at the stove at the house, but there's just something about food cooked over an open fire that uh, that smell, that smell you just can't get anywhere else. And I'm hoping that these uh, bacon wrapped jalapenos cook pretty soon because I'm tired of looking at them. I'm ready to eat them. Well, it's evening here at uh, the campsite. <clears throat> I've got uh, my chicken cooking on the uh, squirrel cooker. It's uh, just about done. I kind of don't know how long to cook it for. It's kind of dark on this side, but this side looks pretty good. I've also got my bacon wrapped jalapeno. I already ate one. I couldn't wait. But uh, what I wanted to show you was my uh, my campsite. This is a nice place. This is a, an area you could easily put, oh, 10, 12 tents if you wanted to. I've got my uh, Hennessy Expedition ASIM hammock right over here. I'll go underneath the porch here. Um, pretty nice setup. I took a little short nap earlier and uh, so I might, uh, I might sleep in that for a little while tonight. I have an underquilt that I might use, I might not. It's only supposed to get down to 50 tonight, so we'll see. Uh, but I also have my uh, Polish Lavu set up on a ridge line. So it's a little smaller, it's set up right here, so I can you know go in there if I want. It's not gonna rain tonight, I don't really, really have to worry about that. And I've also got my uh, Locust Gear Kaffir Shelter set up over here. So this is the Taj Mahal. I brought my uh, my G stove. I don't know if I'm going to use it at all tonight. I'm leaning toward probably not, because it's not going to be cold enough to have the stove going inside the tent. And since I can have an open fire, I really don't need to cook on it. Uh, maybe in the morning we'll see. But anyway, this is the camp set up for tonight. I cooked uh, some fried potatoes on the old 1940s Coleman stove earlier. But I already ate him. So anyway, I'm just gonna hang out here. Maybe a little while later, when it gets a little closer to dust, maybe I'll see some deer. Who knows? Maybe a mountain lion, fox, or a bobcat. 
I haven't seen any people. I heard a woodpecker earlier, but that was it. Been pretty quiet down here. Well, I pulled the uh, pulled the chicken off the uh, off the spit here. So we're going to cut into this and see how this looks. Uh, I've never cooked anything on the open fire like this. It looks like it's pretty good to me. Oh yeah, look at that. If you only had smell-o-vision, you could uh, just smell what this cooks like, uh, what this tastes like. This is a very large chicken breast, and it has, um, it's called sweet heat. It's a kind of a southern spicy very hot uh, rub dry rub I put on the chicken breast before I put it on the squirrel cooker and it's uh, it's pretty good this is gonna be tasty well I'm uh, sitting here by the campfire uh, for some reason this log is a little smokier than the other ones I don't know why didn't see any deer, you know, I really thought I would. I was really uh, excited to head to Santa Rosa Mountain, and it was kind of a letdown, it really was. Um, there were too many people, the campsites were crappy, and uh, uh, I don't know, I just expected a little better out of it, I guess. I mean, the Thomas Mountain is, is better in my book, so, and this is obviously a really nice spot too, so. Uh, the one thing I did notice here is uh, the moths really like my headlamp here and the lantern. So they've been buzzing around my eyes and around my ears for the last 15 minutes. It's not quite 100% dark. It's close. But uh, still been a, nice, uh, been a nice evening. I had my uh, chicken that I cooked on the squirrel cooker. And I had my potatoes that I fried in my old, uh, I don't know, almost 100-year-old 80 year old Coleman stove. So tomorrow I'm gonna to have bacon and eggs, sleep in a little bit and then uh, pack up and head back home. So this is just a little quick overnighter, just a uh, gear shakedown. The one thing I did I did do, which I was kind of bummed at, uh, while I was gonna light my fear hand lantern, uh, I turned the, the knob the wrong way and I sucked the, the um, wick down inside there and I can't get it out. I don't wanna ruin it. So I wanna just take it home, put it on the workbench Take it apart nice and slow because I really like the lantern. I just, uh, I guess I turned it down too low last time and it got uh, a little too far down. So I'm going to have to take the globe out. I'm going to have to take the, the top ring off and uh, fish out the uh, the wick. And uh, I'll probably have to trim it anyway and just, just reset it. So give me something to do tomorrow, I guess, besides clean all the gear. So far, it hasn't been too bad. It's been really quiet. It's only been uh, one guy came down here. And he drove around real slow, got out of his van. He was driving a van and got out of the van and uh, was kind of, I don't know, messing around with some gear in the back and then closed the hatch and drove off. So maybe he was thinking about camping on the other side of the big tree over there and then thought better of it and uh, just headed back. So anyway, I think I'm going to sleep in a hammock tonight. I haven't slept in a hammock in a long time. And I haven't slept in my uh, Hennessy hammock in a really long time. Uh, last several times I've taken the uh, the hammock out for overnight adventures. It's been the Eno Double Nest. So I'm going to try uh, uh, the uh, Expedition ASIM and see how it works. It's a little too heavy to take on a backpack trip, but for car camping, it's great. And it, uh, this one also has an enclosed bug net. So once I get inside, I might zip the bug net closed just to keep the mosquitoes at bay, you know. But I'll let this fire go for a while, and then uh, i got... Plenty of firewood. In fact, I brought firewood and I didn't even open it. Didn't even un unseal the, the plastic. So I've got plenty. I chopped up some with my uh, folding buck saw and I used my uh, my small hand hatchet for the, the kindling and uh, we're great. So anyway, I'm just going to sit around the campfire for a bit. Enjoy the peace and tranquility and the warmth from the campfire and then uh, hit the hay. I'll catch up with you first thing in the morning. Well, good morning. It's about uh, 
Well, it's probably about 5.45, 6 in the morning. Slept pretty good, actually, in the hammock. I haven't slept in my hammock in a long time. Uh, uh, slept in the, uh, the Hennessy Expedition ASIM hammock with my uh, underquilt. And uh, I slept, uh, for the most part, all night. I woke up one time, just had to go to the bathroom, but uh, it was about 1, that was it. Uh, oh, the other time I I did wake up, it was around 11, 30 or 12. It was kind of funny. I I heard something in the distance, and I, I heard this, uh, it's almost like a clang. And I heard it again and again. There was like a little rhythmic noise to it, and I thought, oh, great. There's probably a raccoon or something, because I left the trash in the trash bag just sitting out. And uh, I thought, oh, someone's getting in the trash. I thought, well, I don't think anybody's trying to break into the Jeep. It would be, it would be more noise than that. And I got my flashlight out, and I looked off in the distance, and all I saw were eyes, like 50 sets of eyes. I'm like, oh, my God, what is that? And then I hit it on high, and uh, I realized it was a herd of cattle. <laughs> And they had come down out of the mountainside and they had kind of moseyed across the camp and they were probably only 40 50 feet away and i guess they were feeding on some of the grass and what's funny is you probably can't see them but they're right there <laughs> i guess they thought this was a good spot to sleep too and the one thing that made me a little nervous was uh the steers have really big horns <laughs> they're like texas longhorns or something and one of them came fairly close to the jeep I thought, well, I hope they don't start nosing around through my camping supplies. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of fun. So uh, I didn't realize it till about 15 minutes ago. They're still over there. They're still over there hanging out. And I wasn't going to do the fire this morning, but it's kind of cold. It's about uh, 43, 42, something like that. And I still had some, some a lot of wood left over that was left over from, you know, whoever was here from before, plus the stuff that I... You know, I cut up with a buck saw. But it's only 43, I think. Yeah, it says 43 on the thermometer. So I've got my, uh, my Coleman stove going over here. And I'm making a pot of coffee. So i got to turn this up a little bit, it looks like. There we go. So the old Coleman stove is doing its thing. And then uh, i got to get the coffee in me first. Once I get that going, I'm going to... Maybe I'll start tidying up around camp and maybe I'll put some of the stuff away that I don't really need and then uh, get out the breakfast fixing because the bacon and eggs sounds good right now. I'm debating on whether to cook it on the cast iron pan on the fire. I might, just for something different, but I don't know. The Coleman stove works good too, so we'll see. I might just go stand by the fire, kind of take some chill off. I'm not cold, but uh, my feet are a little chilly, so I wonder why I'm still barefooted here up here in the mountains but anyway everything's like it came through the night intact okay nice and clear I woke, when I woke up the stars you would not believe the stars you can see the Milky Way you can see every star it's incredible anyway I'm gonna go uh, tidy up around camp and then uh, check on my coffee well these were my visitors last night I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit without getting too blurry There's the big steer sitting there in the bush. He's kind of keeping a watch over me. The rest of the cattle are just slowly waking up this morning. Some are getting up and eating their morning breakfast. Us are just hanging out. Well, it looks like my coffee is just about ready. It's percolating pretty good in the old Coleman stove. In fact, let me go get my cup. Maybe I'll pour me some. Got my uh, cooks I haven't used in a long time, so I thought maybe this would be a good time for it. This is a big one, too. This one holds uh, about 14, 16 ounces. Let's see what this looks like. Let's see what the color looks like here. The 
This is an old stovetop coffee pot. Got this at a thrift store for like four dollars, three dollars. And looks like it's working pretty good. Nothing better than a nice piping hot cup of coffee in the first thing in the morning when it's cold outside. Ooh, it's pretty strong. And it's uh, it's black. A lot of times I put creamer and sugar in it, but I, uh, I brought sugar, but I didn't bring any milk or creamer, but I'll have to do without today. Well, since I'm camping, back to basics, I guess. I decided to cook uh, my bacon and eggs over the campfire today. So over here, I've got my, uh, it's probably a 80, 90 year old Griswold skillet just sitting on the fire grate and uh, I got the bacon sizzling in there. When it gets a little a little further along, I'll show you to you, show it to you. And you can uh, just imagine how it's gonna smell once it gets going. Tell me this uh, bacon doesn't look good, huh? Looks like it's about done. I think so. I'm gonna take this off and let it set, put it in my little paper plate over here. I'll do this so we can get some of the grease out. It's funny all the uh, all the cattle just picked up and wandered off. Now it's time to add the eggs to the mix. We're gonna have bacon and eggs. I noticed from the uh, last camper that was here, they left some eggshells in the fire. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the eggshells home with me. Maybe you can use them in the garden or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take these home. Looks like they're cooking okay. Nothing better than eggs in an old skillet. Anyway, after I get the uh, bacon and eggs done, get the camp cleaned up, I'm going to start packing up. Still haven't seen anybody. It's still strange about the cattle. You know, they just came down on their own. They ate a little bit, went to sleep, and then headed off all on their own. Huh. No oh well. Boy, when they say the sun rises, it rises in a big way. Uh, sun just uh, creeped up over the edge of the mountain over there. And uh, boy, is it bright this morning. We got my uh, bacon and eggs this morning. That will be pretty good. This, uh, Divided ten that I'm using is an old military um, surplus. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's for when they went to the. I guess it's for when they went to the mess hall or something. Cut this up really good. Have a nice big piece of bacon. Surprised I didn't see any deer last night. I really thought I would have. I was going to make uh, Waverly's Rancheros, but I decided not to. It's the first time I've used my uh, cast iron skillet on an open fire, and you know what? It worked perfect. That skillet is so old, it's from like uh, 19. 25 to 1935 range, so it's almost 100 years old. It's got 100 years of history behind it and seasoning. I've seasoned it since I've got it, but I, I didn't really even need to. I didn't feel the need to strip it all the way down to bare metal and start over again. It was it was pretty clean. It wasn't rusted at all, so whoever had that skillet before 
took really good care of it. Probably a grandmother or great grandmother. Who knows? Maybe it was handed down. But anyway, it was handed down to me. Now I got it for like five bucks at thrift store. So that's going to turn out to be one of my better skillets, I think. Eggs didn't stick at all to it. And the bacon, the bacon lifted right up. And the bacon grease made a nice coat. Bacon grease is great for seasoning of a skillet. It's one of the better ones. You know, you talk about all the different oils, olive oil, and uh, these other things you can use. But uh, bacon grease and frying potatoes are about the two best things. You know, I'm going to let the fire go out here because I'm going to be leaving here in probably an hour, hour and a half. So I'm going to let it go down. But it's starting to smolder and smoke really bad right now. By the way, it's been a good camp. It's kind of boring being here by yourself, you know, nobody to talk to. I brought a little, uh, an old Grundig multi-band radio and I didn't check it before I left and uh, it lasted about five minutes and it went dead, batteries went dead, so, oh well. I did break a couple of things. I cracked the handle on my tomahawk while I was out here. And uh, I kind of figured that was a possibility, so I'm going to have to buy a new one. I also have to fix my fear handle lantern. I, I pulled the wick down too far inside, now I can't get it back out. So I'm going to have to take the burning, burner unit off and just basically refeed it through the, uh, the handle. So it's not a big deal. It's not broken, it's just I, I just got to you know, fix it. That's about it. I did sleep in the hammock all night. I didn't... Uh, I didn't bother to go into the Lavu or my uh, Kaffir shelter. I'll save that for another time. But I have a feeling the reason that guy left is he thought there were a bunch more people coming because he saw the other shelters. I wouldn't doubt it. If I would have just had one shelter, he might have stayed. Oh well. This is a good spot. I'll have to remember this. I have to remember the cattle. They left. Every one of them left. They didn't even stay for breakfast. How rude. Anyway, the bacon's really good. Nothing better than bacon while you're camping. Alrighty, take care. We'll see you in another edition of Anthony's Audio Journal on YouTube.